After the evening at Luxor, the ship continued down the Nile as we slept, so that we could depart in the early a.m. for the first location of day six, Dendera. Most of the mud brick perimeter walls are still intact, and old photos show that this site was also buried in sand upon rediscovery. If a pylon once existed, I saw no remaining evidence. This temple is predominantly made from sandstone, but also includes limestone and granite, much of which is well preserved. I've read that it's built upon the foundations of earlier buildings dating as far back as the 4th dynasty, but the current standing structures mostly date from the Ptolemaic era forward. Construction of the Temple of Hathor, which is the most prominent structure, began in 54 BCE. I have yet to find information regarding these structures which flank the main gate but the Corinthian-style columns would lead me to believe they are Greco-Roman additions. In front of the gate ruins are two sets of lower door hinge pockets, and what I'd guess are holes for vertical locking bars. The lintel block features not only the winged sun disc, but also a winged scarab from the underbelly perspective. We're told this is the only instance ever found. Once through the gate, the first structure on the right is said to be a Roman birth house. The outer corridor is mostly standardized blocks with a running bond, so this upper section seems a bit out of place. I get the feeling that this is a modern reconstruction, but I have yet to do the research. The crown details in rough shape, and the ceiling shows signs of erosion as well as possible soot buildup. The back perimeter wall is adorned with high relief carvings, and the large central chamber contains intricate ceiling carvings. Within what remains of the surrounding walls in front of the structure, we can see a plethora of bow tie pockets, just like we saw at Kamambo. Second stop was a spare parts bin. There's a collection of boxes, then this shrine looking thing which appears to be basalt, a carving of Bess, blocks repurposed as wheels, possibly grinding stones, random blocks, conical vessels, an assortment of sarcophagi, and lastly what looks like a Hindu yoni. Here are a few inside views of the mud brick walls. As we approach the temple, we notice the split door frame, just like we saw in the Hathor temple at Philae. Also, all of the Hathor depictions have been defaced. Then I got distracted by these holes within the bottom wall course, all of which were plugged with sand. The first section of the temple is a hypostyle hall with 18 columns, 24 if you count the six integrated into the front wall. I've also seen this area labeled as a vestibule, Every surface aside from the floor is covered in a mix of high and low relief carvings, and a lot of effort has gone into removing that iconography. One belief is that this destroys the god's power, but perhaps senseless vandalism has always been a thing. The column bases have also sustained damage. At first I thought this was chipped away plaster, but closer inspection revealed that it's concrete fill where the solid rock had been smashed and removed. And here we see some ceiling repair. I don't believe this to be plaster top coat because we can see the parallel joints between the slabs. I'm amazed at how vibrant the blue pigment remains after close to 2,000 years. And of course I had to get a shot of the polygonal floor as well as the erosion and bottom door hinge pocket as we approach the second section of the temple. I've seen this area referred to as the small hypostyle hall because it has six columns. Scaffolding was set up because the current restoration at the time of our visit was cleaning the ceiling to remove old soot buildup. The side chambers within this area looked very similar. I found a layout which labels them as treasury, laboratory, libation room, harvest room, and two offering rooms. I have no idea how those functions were determined. The chamber labeled number 5 apparently has access to one of the underground crypts, but it was either concealed or I just totally missed it. I have no photos, so it could be either. Chamber 6, however, is a bit interesting. This is the fabled hidden underground temple. When I first wandered into this room, there were two tour members looking at a hole in the floor. Before the room filled up and we were joined by a site guardian, I jumped into that hole and put my hand underneath the fully exposed stone. It was around 5 inches thick. Unfortunately, I wasn't shooting any video and I have no photo evidence of my hand underneath that stone. Yeah, as I, uh, 
Do we know they're long or they're just segments cut out? Are they, do they go all the way down or are they just segments? Down. This is like built upon other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this, is, this looks to me not the tops of columns, but basis of columns. They're being reused. And you've got a little bit of They're very interesting, though. You've got a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of inscription. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Are they bases or the tops? No, I, I don't think know how they're deep bases. they go down. I think they're bases. And I don't... It's like they use them as infill. I'm not saying that they go down that deep. Well, this one you can see around the edge here. Can you see the edge of it? Yeah, you can. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it goes underneath. Oh, this, that's, is the, this is a base right here. Yeah. yeah. They're very interesting, though. They look to me like someone's tried to. Use it as masonry under the floor to support yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And when we go to Elephantine Island, you'll see this very explicitly the same yeah. concept of using older sort of what look like a little pyramid type thing. This you this is what you find on basis of columns, at least in other places. No, oh, that's better. But this show has been used and reused and you know, built on older uh, building? Yeah. Uh, we will see this in other places when you go to Elephantine Island. Elephantine Island, I was just telling them, Elephantine yeah. Island is a good track. Exactly. Of this. Why? Because they wanted to bring energetic foundation to the temple. Exactly. Okay. But maybe, maybe there is an, an underneath temple, yeah. older. But yeah. this is not the, no, the this case. Is this is it. not the evidence. And, and if you, those who are into Schwaller, R.A. Schwaller, the Lubitsch, mm -hmm. who influenced West, who influenced me, mm -hmm. who, that's why we know each mm -hmm. other. I mean, you can trace all these things mm -hmm. back. He talked about how you old, always need a portion of an older structure mm -hmm. as a seed, if it, you would, to build maybe a good newer word, structure as a seed. On. Exactly. So I see this as a seed mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. newer structure. Mm -hmm. In summary, these are cross-sections of old columns repurposed as foundation stones, possibly for structure, possibly to build upon or harness the old energies, most likely for both. Also consider, if these were columns, no one would be able to walk between them. That's not to say there aren't underground structures, because there are at least four known subterranean crypts. At the end of the day, don't take my word for it. Go to Egypt, visit this temple, see it for yourself. Just be quicker than I was and get a good picture. Next are the staircases. This is a picture of the access to the straight run on the east side, but first we're checking out the spiral run on the west side. The fantastical stories are that these are either melted by some solar event like plasma ejection, or a corrosive liquid was spilled. Supposed melting uh, stairs, which is really, I think, just where people have walked up with bare feet and worn it out over the years. Some of these are solid blocks. Uh, Mohammed's view certainly is that this is uh, not a, a melting by some strange heat that's come in, which I tend to concur with. Yeah, to me it just looks like some of the, the natural veins in the stones, and if these are one or two pieces of blocks, you chisel the stairs out of it, and of course the veins would show through that like that with a wet pattern. Which you can see if you go down, you can see with this lovely angle I've got, how the, uh, the stairs have, have worn away, and then we elevate a bit. rare interrupted uh, ability to see here. There's a very interesting actually uh, phenomenon over here which is one of these uh, passageways where the light comes in and then the stars come in at night. Again we can see a similar wearing pattern here. You know over the years it's been worn down, lots of people have gone up to the roof, it does look like it could be some kind of slick, some kind of um, you know, wearing or slick of uh, stone, but I don't think that's the case. There you go. Now I'm no expert on solar outbursts, but it would have to fly perfectly into the rooftop entrance, navigate nine right turn corners, and isolate all of its damaging power to the steps, mercifully sparing the walls. Side note, that's the entrance to the second floor, 
I did step into the landing, but the access was blocked off by a locked gate. Yet another picture failure on my part. I'm also no expert when it comes to corrosives. It could probably turn the corners with the help of gravity, but we'd see some splash damage up on the walls. Also, that would take a lot of fluid, not just one jar full. Once on the rooftop, we see this large skylight opening with a safety grate. And this is the view via inside from the first floor. In the back western corner, we have a smaller version of the Hathor Temple, which I've also seen referred to as a kiosk. Looking back towards the front of the temple, we have an ancient floating staircase, as well as a sketchy modern metal staircase. This access was blocked off. I read that a tourist fell to her death from the top, so that's probably why. In the front western corner, via the spiral staircase landing, there is a chapel with a ceiling carving dedicated to the birth of Osiris. In the front eastern corner, there is a chapel with a ceiling carving of a zodiac. Turns out this is a plaster copy, as the original was aggressively removed, aggressive to the point of using dynamite to loosen the roof. It was restored in Paris in 1822, installed by Louis XVIII in the Royal Library, and moved to the Louvre in 1922. It's a straight staircase. This is an upwards view of that staircase. Let's walk back up. You can see they're also eroded with no window access for the magical plasma blast. Back on the first floor, we have an even smaller Hathor chapel or kiosk with a ceiling scene featuring Newt and Bez. This is a shot of the sanctuary, ceiling covered in soot, and this is the left side corridor leading around and behind. We're heading to this room because that's the location of the back subterranean crypt, which we were able to access. I assume a bribe was involved. I've read that there are a total of 12 crypts within this temple, and based on old maps I've found, there are three within the first floor walls, five within the second floor walls, and four underground. To access this crypt, you descend a steep wooden staircase and crawl through a forced access hole in the wall, which leads to a set of carved stone steps. I'm not sure if this access would have been opened or concealed, nor am I aware of how it was discovered. This is a view to the right, and this is a view to the left, left being the direction for more controversy. First we see this hieroglyph. Lost technology theories include a battery terminal, magnetic poles for energy transference, or some kind of purification. At the end of the chamber, we find the so-called Dendera light bulb hieroglyphs. Is this proof that Egypt had electricity, or is it a depiction of a creation story? I can't disprove nor validate either, but they are cool. We're told this is the glyph for gold, and it appears multiple times. And I think this figure on the right is either Heket or Upu. It would be great if all these panels within the crypts could be cataloged for study, photos, and 3D scans. In fact, I'd love it if that could be done with every temple, tomb, and pyramid. I've always read and heard that these light bulb carvings could only be seen in the crypt, but that is false. A third variation can be seen on the first floor in a top right corner. If memory serves, it's in this area next to the straight staircase, but if that's wrong, check the small hypostyle hall. So I'm in Dendera Temple Crypt, and I have to climb through this little tiny hole in order to get back out. In this back center chamber is a rickety metal ladder, which leads to a small elevated chamber. It's very hot, 
and all of my photos were terrible. Moving to the exterior, we see a false door carved into the wall, and I don't remember where this was, but I probably walked through it. Towards the top of the wall, we see some decorative lion or lioness rain spouts for channeling water off of the roof. Rounding the corner, we see a small temple dedicated to Isis, and next to it are one to two coarse remnants of walls riddled with more bow tie pockets. The back wall of the main temple is covered in carvings of Cleopatra and her son Ptolemy the Fifteenth, also known as Caesarion. I'm not sure what was here, but someone really wanted it removed. The horns lead me to believe it was probably Hathor. Rounding the next corner to head back to the front of the temple, we get another view of the mud brick walls and a large side rear entrance gate. More lion rain spouts, corner bead I almost missed, and a random line of holes between the second and third wall course. Another spare wheel, more bow tie pockets, and of course one last photo of the temple as we head back to the bus.